I'm Christopher Rothko. I'm the chair of the Rothko Chapel Board of Directors. And we're in the Rothko Chapel right now, which is a, uh, a spiritual space designed by my father, Mark Rothko. And it is an ecumenical center, uh, a chapel where people of any background, any religion, any faith or, or lack of faith can come and find a space to, to think, to meditate, to worship in whatever way they see fit. And it's open to all every day, 365, every day of the year. So the Rothko Chapel is in Houston, Texas, in the heart of what we call the Museum District. It was commissioned by the Demineal family in the mid-60s and opened in 1971. From the earliest time in my father's career, he imagined creating a space, a space where he could really set the tone and have a very direct interaction with his viewer. And the Rothko Chapel was really the dream commission he had always waited for. These 14 paintings and the building that houses them are really one work of art. And together with the viewer, they create meaning. When we talk about the Rothko Chapel, we talk about the many different areas that it embraces, that being the artwork itself, that being the spiritual mission, the fostering of interfaith understanding, and the more active piece of championing human rights. One of the things that I find most attractive about the Rothko Chapel is the fact that it is a living institution in many different ways. And that's uh, a tradition that we carry on and keep very active here. The Rothko Chapel offers a wide variety of programming, including meditative and spiritual seeking types of uh, events. In a moment, in an instant, you are centered, you are focused. Speakers who talk about current issues today, both locally and around the world. We also offer musical and cultural events, events that we feel capture some of the spirit of the chapel and let people re-experience the space in a new way. We offer a, a, a broad variety of programming and have about 5,000 people come to our programs each year and they represent many different stripes of the Houston community, as well as people from around the country and even from foreign countries as well. Houston is a, is a very large city and it's growing all the time. It's a city of tall buildings and many roads. And then you can take, take a turn into a quiet little neighborhood, a little, a little oasis in the midst of all the noise and the busyness. And in the middle of that is the Rothko Chapel and its campus. And whether you're standing on the plaza outside, sitting by the broken obelisk of, Bar of Barnett Newman sculpture, or finding quiet inside the chapel, it's a completely different environment. It's a place to remember that you're human in the midst of all the chaos. We shall overcome. We The Rothko Chapel recently invited Ruth and May Harris, one of the original freedom singers, to help us remember Martin Luther King his tremendous contribution to the world of human rights and to fostering peace between peoples. It was a fabulous program because on the one hand it was beautiful, it was filled with song that made the human spirit soar, but it also reminded us of all the work that's been done and all the work that still needs to be done. The Rothko Chapel is an institution that both embodies history and it is something that needs to be preserved the Rothko Chapel is a relatively small organization, but a very ambitious one. We very actively work with donors and foundations to raise the necessary funds, both to preserve this very important space and to do the programming that reaches out into the community. About half of our funding comes from our endowment, which was given to us by the Demineal family. And although we are down the block, we are in fact separate from them. So part of our work at the Rothko Chapel is to make sure that the building and the artwork itself is maintained and conserved. We are stewards of a unique institution, one that's unlike any in the world, and it's simply part of our, our duty to make sure that it is optimally maintained. A portion of our energy and a portion of our, of our budget is always targeted to maintain the chapel and improving the experience for the viewer. 
My father spent his entire career looking for a universal language in his artwork, one that could speak to everyone. I think the fact that we have more than 80,000 visitors a year, people from every possible country in the world who come here, attests the fact that he found that language, and specifically that the Rothko Chapel is a particularly strong embodiment of that, a unique gem, one that is unlike any place else in the world, and that people actually make a pilgrimage to come see. And while I hope that this little bit that I've told you about the Rothko Chapel has piqued your imagination and has given you important information, I can say so clearly that there is no substitute for experiencing it directly, and I really welcome you to come here and have your own unique experience.